Good evening, everyone. It's a real pleasure to welcome you all, and it's an especially big pleasure to welcome our lecturer tonight, the inspiring architect, Francis Quéré, who will be giving the inaugural John Forrester Lecture. The John Forrester Fund was created in memory of John Forrester, who received his B.Arc degree from Columbia in 1964 and went on to become a practicing architect working on a variety of architectural and interior design projects throughout New York City and the greater New York metro area. This fund honors John Forster's experience at GSAP during which he benefited enormously from the opportunity to engage and interact with some of the greatest architects of his time. The fund hopes to inspire and continue these important interactions between generations of architects. And I'm so very pleased to have members of Mr. Forster's family join us this evening for this inaugural lecture. Certainly I could never have hoped for a more appropriately motivating guest speaker to give us this first lecture than Francis Quéré. Today is also the first day of Black History Month, and so it's just a wonder wonderful to be able to hear Quéré speak this evening, also on this occasion. Like many of you, I'm sure, I've been a great admirer of Quéré's work ever since his seminal first project, the 2004 Gando Primary School in Burkina Faso which he designed, raised funds for, and realized in collaboration with the residents of his hometown while still a student at the Technical University of Berlin. The school was awarded the prestigious Aga Khan Award for Architecture, garnering him critical acclaim from the outset of his career. In 2005, Quéré founded his architecture practice, Quéré Architecture GmbH, as well as the Quéré Foundation, a nonprofit organization that pursues projects in Gando. With this very first project, Quéré set the tone for the tenor and uniqueness of his practice, one that weaves together a capacity to produce undeniably elegant and sophisticated architecture with an ability to produce spaces that are also accessible, warm and inviting, able to hold the everyday life of their communities. Quéré's buildings are not quote unquote sustainable architecture with bells and whistles or poster children for quote mud architecture they are instead incredible pieces of infrastructures which are anchored in place through materiality, structures that are able to harness and mobilize the movements of light, air, and water, and projects that offer fresh and original playfulness together with disciplinary resonances in their expression. In recently leading, I would say, reading, I would say indulging in Guéret's uh, published monograph, Radically Simple, I was struck by the power and cons consistency of Quéré's body of work with many projects today spanning the African continent and beyond. The book exudes an overwhelming feeling that if there is still the possibility of an avant-garde today, it would be in Africa, where Quéré's body of work is moving the continent and indeed all of our architectural imaginations to a scope far beyond the West, beyond paternalism, beyond cliches and reductive oppositions to propose instead work that is at once visionary and grounded, literally grounded in the power of the communities, contexts and histories that they serve and advance. Again, I'm so delighted to have you with us tonight, Francis, and I wanna invite everyone to uh, join me in welcome you, welcoming you so warmly this evening. So now we have to work a little bit I need to be guided because I'm standing in a place where I uh, really have a lot of problem and I had an electricity shortage now. Let's keep finger crossed, guys. I'm so sorry. But no, this it's is, an on honor to have you. Sir. This is part of my reality to everybody, you know? And that's why um, sometimes I attempt to say in the West, we are spoiled. We don't know what we have really. So, okay, again, I left even, I drove, I drove like four, five hours for 150 kilometers, I needed four hours to arrive here. And I'm still struggling, uh, just to be able with you. At the same time, keep calling the driver to know if even is safe, because you know, Burkina Faso is going through terrorism. But this is not the issue. We do this because I have a great passion for the architecture. Just yesterday, this picture that you can see, I have visited it with Ivan. And by the way, greetings from Ivan, uh, who is being touring with me, uh, this incredible place, checking things that I have been talking about it to him since many, many years. Um, can you see me? Yep, we can see you and we can okay, hear you. Okay, great, great. Please tell me if you don't see me. Yeah, so 
um, so that I'm sure. Okay, greetings from Ivan. So because I am in the US, I would love to talk about project that I'm doing now in the US. Um, here is the Xylem Pavilion. Um, you know, um, for me to be connected and share the work with uh, very, um, you know, uh, great, inspiring um, and visionary schools like yours, um, it pushing me always to try to show the best part of, you know, trying to show the project that are moving me and where I was able to, 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 to challenge, to, just to create something that was almost impossible. Here, the Silent Pavilion in, in, in uh, Montana, um, at the site of the Tipper Rice Art Center. Uh, when I was commissioned, I wanted to go back to Burkina Faso and then learn from the tradition and be able to design uh, the pavilion. Kathy and Peter, the, the maker of the Tipper Rice Art Center, asked me to create a sort of gathering space, a sort of um, pavilion in the center where people can come and meet and rest. So the Tuguna was an inspiration for that purpose. The Tuguna is, um, let's say, a landmark uh, in the Dogon land. Actually, I was planning to go there with Ivan Bond to explore, but at the moment, this is impossible, impossible, because uh, this region is suffering under terrible terror attack. But the Tuguna is a symbol of freedom, of peace, you know? The, 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 the Tuguna is designed the way that it forced people to enter uh, not standing. So it's taking away aggressivity, aggressivity within the community. So by sitting, you cannot be aggressive. So I wanted to use this symbol um, that I'm learning from my culture uh, to, the, to, um, uh, to Montana and design this pavilion. And so dear student, I am doing like you, your teachers. I am trying always to put my ideas in sketches. This is a sketch that we did. And I also do like you do, may be doing renderings. Um, but you will see later, I do a lot of mock-up, um, really real mock-up. Here is a render, of course. Um, when I was in Montana, I was impressed, really. Coming from, from uh, the Sahara, um, trees are something for me so important, so meaningful, uh, the most important things I, in nature or in human life. When I came to Montana, I saw this dead forest and I was very impressed. So talking to the client, there was an idea to use dead forest and to give it a new life. So uh, we went collecting a lot of wood. At the end, we discovered that there is a lot of wood in Montana that is just used for, to burn or to use for other purposes than construction. Uh, and I ask if we could, have, we could get enough from them to design, um, to build the pavilion. And here we got them. And here, what we did is try to do like I will do in Burkina, taking the skin of the wood with a very, you see it, very simple tool and that in the US. Uh, you know, Montana is a very difficult area. It has a very strong summer, but also a, a strong, hard winter. So the challenge was, how do you build uh, in, in a given schedule to create a pavilion uh, during winter time uh, and to build it, to install it, to be ready to open in summer? We went up to create bundles, to create components uh, that we could use that we could build and then later transport to the site uh, and install. Uh, here, Nina, uh, a team member uh, that went to me to, to, to try and check the sittings element that we have been creating uh, with the company, um, a builder uh, in, the, in, in Montana. So Chris um, is his name. So this is what we was doing in his workshop, what he did he was incredible. He has a lot of tools. And here, very quick, that is the pavilion you can see now in reality. And I mean, I don't want to say 
that there is a, conne a, a connection to the landscape, to this, wide, to this vast monumental landscape. But you see, um, that is the, uh, what I tried to do with this design, not to mimic, but to build a sort of little space within this uh, big landscape to attract people to rest. And so it looked like this in winter time. Being part of the landscape. So in, in this beautiful end of uh, summer, it's also react um, beautifully to the nature. Uh, another project that I was uh, uh, happy to be to be to do is uh, uh, at Coachella. Uh, honestly, you guys in the US, you may laugh about me, but um, I have to say until that, I didn't know what is Coachella, really. If you ask me, I would say it's a Mexican drink or something very different. Uh, however, I didn't pay much attention because I'm always busy trying to push the things I'm doing in Africa that sometimes you may miss a very important partner. Here, in this case, I have a daughter, Josephine, who sometimes came to the office to check and mostly also to take care of her daddy that is apparently for her working a lot or traveling a lot. And she came across the name Coachella and she just told me, daddy, and now, that you're refusing to do a lot of things because you have, you know, you you have no time or you you don't want to do too much things. But Coachella is cool. You should do it. So I start to explore what is Coachella, and I discovered this wonderful gathering, this uh, great meeting in the U.S. Uh, where young people come to listen to music, music. But I met also the maker, uh, Paul, Paul Chalet, just really decided to travel to me to Burkina Faso, even when it was a time of terrorism. And he traveled for the first time to Africa. And he told me, you know, I have this festival that is very ex uh, uh, successful, you know, and we want to use this opportunity to promote architecture and art. Would you create, you know, a, a, a structure that serve as orientation and a recreation place for our, um, festival visitors. I said, well, I will. And this is the result, the result. okay? Um, can you see the group of three people on the very left, the low left side, there is red and, 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 and green. Red and green. Yes. This is not part of the pavilion. This, I had to do this because I have to tell you, these young people were so free but some of the pictures are too free to be showing. That's why I try to, 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 to dress them afterward. But you know, it was so open, so great, uh, but too much free body, however, to be showing in a lecture. But that's why I, I dress them a little bit. So the inspiration here was the baobab. In West Africa and in other places also, baobab are really landmark in the landscape you will see them very big, very giant. And in some, you have openings, the trunk are hollow, you know? And then I wanted to just use these to create big baobab during the festival. You are architect, you know, it's not to build and construct a, a baobab. It is just an inspiration. So I went to make sketches, you know, mimicking through my sketches, how this baobab looks hollow inside, how you create something that is giant, that can be seen from far, but then also um, uh, be able, capable of, uh, of providing shade and then place for visitors. And as I told you, we're doing a lot of, of mockups, really a lot, a lot to explore. Um, the, so the idea, and then to make sure that you know what you want to do and what you are able to do before you, you convince the client to do so. Here is Ismael sitting with a, a mock-up. Um, and this is the result, really. Uh, here, we were not really allowed to fly and take some pictures with a drone um, because of privacy, but you can imagine how long the shadows are just rising and inviting the visitor just to gather, to sit and rest. And at night, was like a beacon. So 
playing the role of orientation pieces, you know. And uh, here, what I like in this picture is this young, uh, willing to become a cowboy, looking to this giant structure, this giant baobab that are named together with the with uh, with the people from Coachella, Sarbaleke. Sarbaleke is in my mother language a house of celebration, of festival, you know. So this young um, visitor looking to design Baobab, I've, I hope he will be inspired by this structure. And then this structure, I tell you very clearly, it is simply plywood, steel, very thin steel, and nile, not more than that, really. And color, of course, and I love color. And color for a festival, for me, is like a signal of celebration. And inside is very simple really simple structure. You, you rotate it, you use this triangular element and you can create a shape like this. And from far, you could see it because the festival area is complicated to be seen, but with these towers, you have a quite orientation. And then you will see people coming together. And for me, I was able to just see that in the US, there is no big difference between the people. You know, we are looking all for something that can inspire us, that can serve us, you know, like these people, you know, uh, benefiting from the, from the shade and the canopy of this big baobab. And then uh, the singer, Ar Ar Ariana Grande, standing in you, where my structure is a coulisse, like a, um, uh, for, before a theater, you know, and then singing. And then before I realized, I was surprised to see a lot of posts on, on Instagram. And my daughter is being collecting all of these. And then one day she told, Josephine told me, Daddy, there is a lot of pictures of uh, the baobabs on Instagram, but nowhere, no one can see that it's you that did it. I said, don't worry. The most important thing, people enjoy it. That is about it. And you know, they will find me if they love what I do. If people that are designed for are happy, for sure, many will come. Okay? Now, for the most public, I have been visible because of the Serpentine Pavilion. Um, very quick, um, Hans Ulrich wrote me a letter inviting me to submit a proposal for the Serpentine Pavilion. Um, I have to honestly tell you, um, I never count myself. I never saw myself in the, you know, in the level of serpentine pavilions, really, honestly. So that was something out of my reach. So I ignored the letter and I fly to Burkina Faso to keep pushing my people to create structures. And Adriana, that was that time from, uh, uh, Chicago, that was that time from my off, uh, uh, coaching and working with me in the office, just called me and say, Francis, uh, Hans Orbris, just call here and saying, why are you not reacting to his invitation? It's really serious. So, but honestly, I, I, I thought it was a, a joke, you know? So I came back and decided to say, if they invited me to do something for the Serpentine, I, I mean, they're inviting me, Francis Kere. You know, and I said, maybe I have to take to stay true to myself and give something, something that I know. I wanted to create a canopy, you know, a big tree, you know, and I start to talk about community. And then at the end of the week, I send them these kind of ideas that I had. And I was surprised that I liked these ideas, the idea that I had. So so came it that we have to design the Serpentine Pavilion. Again, the inspiration is trees, but also the historic um, pattern of the brickwork at the Serpentine, uh, so uh, King's Indian Garden for, of the Serpentine Galleries inspired me a lot. Um, but we couldn't build with brick. As you know, um, to build in London is very expensive, but to build in the King's Indian Gardens is even, much more complicated. Um, what you have to do is a lot. Um, so I, we build in my office a lot of mockups to make sure we know 
what we wanted before we convinced the client to invest in wood that we wanted to use. Um, and as you can see here, we wanted to use wood uh, to create this big tree. And as in Gando, we made like many, many components, like you can see. And then we, there was installed, and this is the result that you can see. So, it's a big, a giant tree. Let me say it's a gathering space for the community. That was my idea. And then I could go, I really show people sitting and then talking to each other. This is what I wanted to do, to get people get connected. And, you know, you came and you see people talking to each other. And that was for me um, also, again, a reason to say, if I learn from my culture, from my tradition, I can create something in the West that may be seen as a contribution to architecture. And that was it. It looks, uh, I wanted it to be light and blue because blue is my favorite culture, uh, color. In my culture, in my culture, blue is so important. For a young, a young man, I will say a young man because there's a man, girl has other color. For a young man, the first date for you is to dress blue. If you wear blue, you go through the landscape to go where your, your, your lover's one is, no, your, your, your favorite is living. Everyone will see you through the la landscape walking and then now there is someone dating this girl. So you better be careful. And so that's why I wanted for the first time to have the chance to manifest my architecture in London. I wanted to dress this pavilion with my, my, my best color, my favorite color. And that is it. So dear student, ladies and gentlemen, dear visitor, dear family of the John Foster, um, I want to, foundation, I wanted to tell you uh, how, but how I started to do architecture. This that you see in front of you is the compound where I was born. You know, I was born in the traditional compound in, in Burkina Faso, in a village called Gando. I grew up in a place seeing architecture being considered as something big, something from corporation, from government, no one could touch. It was far off, out of reach. And then um, I got a scholarship to go to Germany, but without school education, I would never have the chance to do that. And this is normally how school looks like in Burkina Faso. Um, I, I, I wanted to make things better and learning from my tradition, how people come together to, to do communal work. Like here, it is not in Burkina Faso, uh, it is here they repair a mosque in Mali. The community come together and then fix the mosque. So I wanted to learn from that and build a school in my home village. So this is already by the next school, the school extension. I get the community together and say, we have rocks, let's collect these rocks and create a foundation so we save money. That's what we did. Let use clay to build walls, but to convince my people to accept this technology using clay because they know it. And clay is being seen in my country as poor people construction material. So they, they reject it. Um, and they said, you know, a school is something from France, something European. We want it to be made out of concrete and glass. You know, this is the expectation of the people. But then to convince them, I came up and I discovered this technology called low cost technology. It is like a compact, compact clay bricks. It is clay that has been mixed with water and cement, a percentage of cement. So with this way you make the bricks regular. And then my people were saying, wow, that is technology. This is something new. And so we went to build the first school completely out of mud. I was from Gando, really. If one day you visit my village, you will see the, the quarry where we got the clay. And then we use rebars 
to make the roof stop because I had not, not a lot of money. And rebars was everywhere available that time. So I could use it and then to create the roof structure. And we used it a ceiling, a massive ceiling out of the same bricks laid over rebars. The element dark that the dark element you see is our rebars. So a light hanging um, roof. And so this is left, you know, normally how a, class, a classroom looked like when I grew up. And then the one that I have created. So you see the difference uh, in the two. It's like day and night. And that was a successful experience. How we did? I did very simple drawings because, you know, in my place, uh, people don't, didn't know about architecture because I told you it's um, uh, something related to big corporation. And uh, here you made very simple drawings to explain people how it work. And I can tell you the building, the school that we did is still like at the beginning, it looked the same. So people are proud about it because normally school, school building government building, no one take care of them. So I, I, I build this school the way that is not breaking apart. And um, it is quite successful. How we did it, how I could get, gain the community to participate. I was making big models, like here, a vault to, you know, here an arc, but to make a big vault, you try this arc out of clay bricks, and then I climb in the middle uh, with the cap is me showing my people, don't worry, it will work. Explaining them what is technology, how is engineering, you know? And so this way we could just build, this is already the, set, the, the extension uh, building that you can see like a vault. Um, and then uh, again, uh, roof structure out of rebars and the roof skin out of metal shade. And so, you can see how it's look like. And inside the vault, where I have openings to allow the hot air to, cir to circulate, you know, venturi system. The, heavier, the heaviest air state remain underground while the hot air is light and escaping out of these openings. Very simple trick. Together with the windows that you can see, lamella windows, we created cross ventilation. And so you create cool places for the teachers and kids. So we have been, with this way, we have been very successful. Um, and then more and more people start to ask me to do, uh, to help them to do their projects. So I will quickly talk, uh, I am in a rush and dear student, dear uh, family of, the, uh, of Col Col uh, Columbia University, this is a, another reality, you know, and I can't promise you as soon as things are okay, I will come to your school in prison to meet all of you. But this, what is going is really my reality. It's not just that you are in a place where everything is correct. Now with digitalization is great, but you know, if you don't have power uh, to have internet, um, it won't work. Okay, very quick, Leo. Leo is a clinic uh, that we've been able to do and to build, um, and then we start to do it in the same uh, way. This is the clinic today that you can see. Uh, I started to build it five, six years ago. And this puzzle never had enough money. So we started to build the first uh, couple of uh, uh, structures. Um, and then um, in this picture, what I want you to see you will see that our site is the only green area in the entire city. Um, it is a healthcare center. Um, and um, this picture that I'm able to show you today was taken this morning by Ivan Bar, um, who traveled with me the whole night from Bobo di Lasso, about eight hours to cross through Dano to go to Leo. And then we could just have this picture. This is the clinic today. Um, and, uh, you know, we use clay to do it. And for me, this project is so 
meaningful because in Burkina Faso, healthcare center are connected to that and dirt. So normally you go in the hospital when you have no alternative, when they push you to go. And mostly it is too late for the people. And also some, you go sometime there and you go back home sick. And this is reality still today, you know, in this, in this 21st century where we're living with fast internet. But here, for me, it was great to be able to create a structure like this out of clay, out of clay. And then while people getting fixed inside, the kids are playing outside, you know? The kids are playing outside. Like you can see in a place where normally people don't go. And our structure was so successful that many doctors were volunteering to go and work there uh, from Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. And so my friend, uh, this doctor that now has become my friend because of this work, uh, asked me to design doctor housing, you know, because there was no hotel in the area. So people can come and stay there uh, and help uh, provide, um, uh, so, you know, their, their, their skills and use it to treat the people. And I went again to be inspired by um, the tradition, how we build housing in Burkina. Look like this, um, either cylindric or a box, you know. And then uh, from that, we create a sort of little compound for the, um, for the doctors. And that is the result today. From the backside, you have a garden that is still grow growing. And this is inside, very simple. Here, the idea was to try to build a small house, you know, mimicking the size of the, uh, the, the housing of the local people with the idea that people can, you know, uh, copy, you know, this way of building to improve their, their homes. That was the idea, that why this size. And yesterday night, myself, I spent the night in this. This is my place. My, my suitcase is even not open, you know. Uh, and so I just arrived, I saw it. I was so happy that I could spend night in the house that I have designed a couple of uh, years ago. And then so Ivan, Ivan had another house and it looked very simple in this inside, very, very simple. But it is luxury in Burkina Faso, you know, in the little house where you have a shower and a toilet in my country is even today, a big, big luxury. And I could achieve this even using clay bricks, you know, a, a, a construction material that was used that has been seen as poor people construction material. So in the front, you see a sort of ventilation system to talk about this today would go uh, far. And then seeing the electricity situation we have, um, uh, it, it will not work. I hope we could do this uh, another time. Another project that I'm doing is called Lycée Chorge. It was just in high school. And now you see I put Lycée Chorge and BIT, Burkina Institute of Technology, um, now in the same site. This client come to tell me, you know, uh, my, I am, me and my wife, we are, we was lucky enough to earn money and we want to give something back. We want to create a high school in honor of, of his brother that passed away um, uh, through an accident in the US. So his nickname was Shorge. So we created this structure and later they wanted to um, create um, a BIT a, 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 in, in the image of MIT, you know. Um, but I will say you more later. This is the site when I started to construct. And this is what was the site in the meantime. And now this is the site, like you can see. I go back expressly to show you how things are growing fast in Burkina Faso. So it's giving you, when they're talking about population growth, it is about how people come to city and to, and to settle around structures. I can tell you in 20 years of time, this will be a, a city center. So that's what we have created. For the 
For the high school, I wanted to create a compound-like structure that will create a courtyard to protect the student during the day from the element. And also I wanted to increase my ventilation systems and adding a tower, a wind tower. And I wanted to use this time laterite. Laterite is a, also a, a, really um, a construction material in Burkina Faso, but also neglected more and more because people think it is for poor people. Uh, what I, I wanted to use them and to give them uh, to get them be accepted, we cut them with the machine. With the cutting, they become regular. And with this, it has become a, a modern construction material. If you pay attention to this picture, you will see kids standing and watching what is happening. I can tell you, sometime when we work, we build, it is like a big theater. It is like a big performance. You know, the community come to watch. So another element we wanted to add is eucalyptus wood. The eucalyptus wood is an imported uh, species, but the quality that it has is if you cut it on the, on, in the ground, you really cut it, it is prizing. You know, you have more finger growing out and they are so straight that people start to use them for scaffolding, for, to burn. And I decided to use them, introduce them to architecture, to create structure with them to create a brisolet with them, a skin to protect buildings. So, and we decided to get women from the community be part of the work. This is normally my work. The community is participating. Here you have women sending the wood, almost like a meditation, but in this way, they also earn money. But in this way also, the project that we are creating become part of the community. It is creating an identity. People know how the building was made and they have been part of the building, but they also earn money out of it to feed their family. Not just the, the boys, but also the girls. Here, to show you again the towers. Uh, this project alone could be a lecture, but I wanted to give you an overview since I have the honor to speak in the honor of a great architect. You know, here is the high school, like it is very quick. I will talk more about the, the newest, the BAT than the high school. And you see the courtyard, how it is, how the kids can be inside. And then in the backside, we have sittings. They can sit, you could see nicely the eucalyptus, the wood that we have been using uh, to create a sort of uh, a bris soleil. And inside the classroom are bright, Again, here you see openings on the top that the, the, so the, the, the you know, let's say the BRT, the, the Institute of Technology. Um, in the back in the, in the in the front you see it, no, in the background you see the, the high school and you see a water tower, a sort of uh, energy tower, I call it power house uh, to serve the two structure and to connect them in terms of architecture, but also in terms of functionality. And then the technology for the BRT, um, because it's a, a center, a technology center, I wanted to use clay in a different way, to pull clay like you will do with concrete. And at four, you made many forms to do many tests. And then because the client was not sure, the client wanted first to have just one classroom. And then we had a little um, uh, discussion where I said, you know, uh, if you want to just do create a, something, you came with a big name like Burkina Institute of Technology, you want to create just one classroom. What is the meaning of that? Pushing me to go and fight and just create a little class, a little box in the desert and then call it innovation. What is the innovation in that, you know? Uh, we end up coming to an agreement to, to, to create a form like you can see. And with this form, we can pull one classroom in, in one time. And so the more money he get, we keep pulling classrooms. So the more students are coming, we keep pulling classrooms. So, and so you can see how the structure is growing. Uh, and actually, this is what we have now. Uh, on the site. Um, 
And then you see the tower um, where we ha also have classes and meetings. And if you approach the structure from one side, it is open to the east and to the south, it's protected with sun shading, wood element. So if you can, you see that there is life inside. Um, and then you start to approach the structure. Here from far, you see the ventilation elements that we wanted to add different to the high school. Uh, we, we designed them uh, crossing the buildings. And inside you have this picture where the student just arrived, parking their motorbike. Um, transportation system is an individual system here. People use bikes, bicycles or motorbike like these ones. And then that is how you enter the BIT. Um, and inside you have a very open a courtyard where everyone can stay, where everyone can be, the student. It's very warm, very welcoming and inspiring, I have to say at the same time. Um, I just show two days ago, I went inside with Ivan, that's why I got all of these pictures uh, that we had to put them. And what is nice to see, after class, you will see the student playing with the, with, with, with the other uh, younger student from the high school. And at night, you have light in, the, in this area. And light is so important. You know, one of the reasons I have realized what I'm, why, why I'm doing the, the work I'm doing is to bring knowledge to my people. First, I started with Gando, and then I came to be able to do many, many projects in many places. And Burkina Faso is still my focus. Here, I realized also that education is like light, like this, what you can see here in the night, you know. Uh, um, hope, you know. So, because what I have been seeing over a decade um, during my work, so let's say during my work, I have always been facing this discussion about who is the best partner for Africa? Who can better help Africa? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. Um, today, uh, some voices are saying China has an advantage. Uh, you know, in the competition, um, who will better help and work with Africa? I don't know what, but here, dear community from Colombia, when I started, when I did my first lecture in your place, let's say I was working with simply my relatives from my village, brothers and sisters and cousins. Nowadays, I have this big structure working with me, very big group of people. And if you add the women, I can tell you, I have more than 300 or 400 people sometime that are, 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 that are working and earning money. You know, you're keeping these young people from the risk to take a boat and go to Europe, to the West, to, the, to America, you know. And today's, you know what happening with populism. Um, so people just use the other people looking for better opportunities to do, you know, to, to oppose people, by the way, so what people are looking is just to, for opportunity to lead a simple and better life. Look at what I'm doing now with my work. You know, here um, um, we're trying to create a, a, a water basin, you know, um, huge people just dig and we construct. This is in the site uh, of the BIT and the, and, and the, and the high school. And you see there is the inside. You don't see it from outside. Uh, we have now better pictures thanks to Ivan, but he's still traveling. We couldn't show you better. But what I'm showing you is not better pictures. It's about content. You know, With this, you can store water. You can use wa this water to grow tree. I am rushing because apparently the, the, short, the shortage, the, the cutoff of the electricity is coming periodically. I fear it may come from that why I'm rushing. Okay, sorry for that. But you see what I want to do? I'm using this water to grow trees, you know, to grow trees. The same like we're building step-by-step -step classes and you see the, the tree are creating shadow for my people. Maybe with my architecture, 
I am contributing to bring my people to the position to not see things like big and for cooperation, but it is our concern. This is why that what motivated me to do what I'm doing. You know, you see these young people, those kids are now in the BIT learning, you know? And so, you know, New York has been built with people, you know? And what I really want in my work, I want my people to be inspired to build their own future. And I want people like you guys to see that I'm considering what I'm doing as soon as important as, as the same way uh, New York has been built. You may laugh, but you know, a little school in Gando is in the eyes of my community, maybe the same that, so how they build uh, a high rise in New York, maybe for you, you know, very inspiring. So thank you very much for your attention. And I'm sorry, sorry for that, but normally, sorry, uh, dear family um, of my favorite great architect, I'm so sorry that it has to be like this, but I am working under these conditions. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Assist, uh, thank you for an amazing lecture. Please, there is absolutely no, reason to be sorry. On the contrary, it is really our honor uh, to have you present and it's so um, important and meaningful at this moment uh, to have you speak. And um, I think you mentioned at some point, you know, in the West, we, uh, we take things for granted. And so I think the context of this lecture is also shining a light on uh, the importance of not taking things for granted and the kind of you know, incredible uh, dedication and commitment and resilience that architecture takes and your engagement uh, is just uh, truly uh, just inspiring at this moment for all of us. Um, so thank you, please don't, don't apologize. No, I, I, the, the work I, is- I, I think <laughs> like they do so here uh, from 11, everyone is sleeping. From midnight, you know, the government is just doing cottage. They're just cat and cat. And now we, we're getting, I have people trying to convince people to just give us, and it's always our room running. Sorry, really sorry for that. But you know, most of the work, if I see someone in the West excited to tell me, I went and I made very fast, I'm looking and I'm surprised and say, wow, uh, you may be lucky to have been able to build so fast. If you see what it, co what it costs, you know, uh, I have to tell you that until a given time, my even little daughter was hiding my passport, you know, um, because I have to go, you know, have to go and build and she didn't, couldn't see me, you know, and, but that is the result. I'm happy to be able to be invited, uh, you know, to do a lecture in memory of a great person like uh, Foster was, you know, and then for Colombia, sorry. And, and we are just so thrilled. I wanted to use this short time of <clears throat> questions and response to give you the opportunity. Uh, you know, at some point you said that this, this project could, could be an entire lecture. Um, and, uh, you know, I was particularly curious, you, you know, uh, your, of course the work really starts with materiality and, and process. And so yeah. I wondered if you would share a little bit with us um, about the process and the relationship between what you draw and how you build and how you scale up the work uh, so much so that the buildings seem to grow even as the school is growing. Um, so maybe a, a window onto your process would be, uh, would be wonderful. No, basically when I arrive in the site, I'm trying to explore what is available. So, and also uh, the, you know, the craftsmanship the on-site the availability of craftsmanship. Then today I have a big team supporting me to source out. If we got a, a cut, it's sure that after two minutes, I may come again, sorry, because that is important to me to let you know that I will come. We're okay, here. So and then that's what we do. And now um, really it's like team and capacity building. That is what is important today for me to be able to keep doing if I'm not there and then to travel to the West to share. Normally, digital would have been a great idea, 
you know, because if we, we can't share like this, from far is good, but you see that we even here, we don't have the access. So again, the material, materiality, it is, you know, people have learned by experience that some materials um, um, used in the construction building requires uh, regular uh, maintenance and it costs a lot of work. And so they simply rejected it and say it's poor people material. They're looking for permanent construction materials. And then modern ones, do, do, this is concrete, this is cement, you know, this is, and, and that, et cetera, and glass, et cetera, et cetera. So I am trying to convince them that if we want to have a, that clay can be as strong as a competitive material like the other materials, if you do it properly. So I have to go through education, through experimentation and to demonstrate, and I'm demonstrating a lot, I'm doing mock-ups really one-to-one -one mock-up to convince my people that it worked before we go and, and do. And to scale up, it depends on what, um, what you mean. Scaling up, uh, you mean spreading the idea? No, I, I meant it was interesting when you mentioned the, the BIT that the school is, you're adding classrooms even. Yeah, even. Yeah, yeah, the site is empty. And as shown as the demand is big, they just say, okay, build two classes. Like, to, like now we have added two auditoriums, uh, one for 200 kids and one for 100 kids. And that, you know, that what we, I went to visit yesterday with uh, Ivan. Um, and then this is one of the pictures you have seen. So uh, almost every year I'm adding for this, to this campus, a new classroom. And the, the demand is big, you know? If they're talking, guys, if they're telling you about, about growing population is about a, a big demand on classrooms and schools need to be created. And then and in every part of the cities, the, the, uh, either on the countryside or even in cities, you need place, you need space for kids to be educated. So in this project, we keep adding classrooms. And in Gando, I didn't talk about Gando yet, you know? Gando is growing now. I'm building uh, one of my biggest projects, a high school. It, is, it will be completed by the end of this year, thanks to the generous uh, uh, support of the um, Sydney E. Frank, uh, Frank Foundation. You Americans are doing good. Huh? You, yeah. you, you support in Europe that thing the state should do, but in the US you have that. So they supported me to build a high school. And this, the, this family is at the maker of the of the Tipper Rice Art Center, where I build this pavilion. They said, you know, you learn from your country, from your culture to create for us this uh, pavilion. We want to support you to make your dream, uh, to create something on honor of your papa, your daddy happen. We support you to build this high school. It is growing and it, it you guys, uh, uh, Dean, be ready to send the student with me. As shown, we Thank overcome you. terrorism, okay? There will be a maze. They will see the material we're using and the enthusiasm of the people, the women, how they show you how to form things, you know, and then how we send this wood and everyone want to be part of it, you know, um, uh, you know, of, of the, the process, you know? So I want to make sure I give a little time, you know, I know time is short, but um, I was curious, uh, you have such a privileged perspective going back and forth now um, with, you know, working in, in, the, in, the, in the US at times with the pavilions and in London and then back in Burkina Faso. And, um, you know, how did you feel about working in the US or working at Coachella or at the Serpentine compared to what you're describing with both the difficulty but also pleasure? I, I was curious about the, you know, the perspective of kind of mm. these two Actually, actually you go, you go, you're going to be surprised. Um, because of, uh, you know, of abundance, if you do something in the West, uh, you have everything. You have skilled labor, you have sometimes the money, you know, and then, uh, you know, the technology is available. Uh, what is uh, missing is the flexibility to do more, except if you're working with uh, people from the Tipper Rise or Coachella or the Serpentine that give you complete freedom to create, you know, but then, uh, if you do something different, regulations, you know, um, I have now two to three projects in Germany 
I am going through the experience of what other architects are going through in the West. Um, but I mean, it is a different experience to work in the West, uh, but very nice. Um, I'm, I mean, um, in, you know, in, uh, if I do in Burkina, I feel that is a, a, a community event, you know, many, many people are participating. And often in the West, except to this, the pavilion we have been doing, you have to be really involved, um, uh, really, because for that, those clients, also my way to work was part of it, like the Tipper Rise Art uh, Center pavilion. Um, but normally, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easier in the West because, you know, you have in everything. Way, yeah. Yeah. In some ways. I'm gonna, you know, make sure we don't keep you too long. I know it's late and difficult, but I, I will try to have a few answers from uh, a few uh, um, uh, just um, uh, thank you so much for an inspirational lecture. I was wondering if you have come across Hassan Fati's work. If so, would love to hear your thoughts on his architecture. Um, yeah. Okay. Actually, I have been asked by Luis Galliano, is the editor in chief of Architectura Viva, to write a couple of words for an edition. Someone in Spain is is uh, is trying to publish the work of Hassan Fati. Um, you know, uh, right now, even right now, we, right now, you know, I can tell you there is only one architecture magazine in Africa. It was in South Africa, and I found out that it was interrupted to appear two years ago. So in this way, you don't learn from the continent, you know? And I have to tell you my own work has been now in my village and in the town where I was born uh, before getting known in Africa. Uh, but then it has been known really broadly in the West before it's coming back. So this situation is making so that we don't have really access to the work of leading of, of, his, of visionary architect that Hassan Fatih has been. Of course, I know his work. Um, of course, I admire his courage to step and just go another way as to just copy um, other uh, uh, typologies. But my own work is very different. So the approach is, of course, trying to deal with community. But uh, how I, I build is very different. Uh, and it, let's say Hassan Fadi has his time and it, it, he's a great inspiration, a pioneer in trying to do things differently than other people used to do in the continent. Uh, I admire a lot. I'm, I am doing it differently. I'm using rebars. I'm using clay in another world, you know? Oh no. Francis, I don't, I don't want to keep you struggling to come back too much. Um, so I want to maybe ask one last very nice. Yeah. Can you um, hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll ask one last question um, that I think summarizes the general feeling that the audience has. Um, thank you for a wonderful insight into your work. It is a pleasure to see that you want to accomplish so much in your home country as well as the world. What can we do to help you? Oh, mon Dieu. <laughs> um, keep being resilient, keep giving you as teacher, as a, a person in the decision position, allow the student to discover uh, the other world than their own, because it will bring us in the position to much more appreciate what we have, really. Often, really, people in the West don't know what privilege they are in. Um, I don't want to talk too much. While I'm talking to you, I'm trying to protect to, to kick out mosquitoes, honestly. And while talking to you now, I am afraid if I catch ma malaria in three days, I may go and uh, measure my temperature and, and think I, I have corona, I will not be able to travel, you know? And also what I want to say uh, is you can, I mean, in you can help me to just push the young people to understand that we are connected, you know? And then, that what we can do is to know that together we can make our world better, you know, okay? Do you have a part, part of the world where uh, you have a privilege to be born in a great place where you have peace and freedom, 
you know if you actually like me doing yesterday struggling uh, check check in po check in leo is there uh, uh, access to internet i want to talk you know i want to accept the the invitation of this great uh, you know educator uh, to uh, give a lecture at columbia in honor of this great 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 architect and then you know and then you struggle you come then what you can say is uh, you know uh, let us together fight for use our you know our profession to create to inspire and serve people you know you know to create and serve humanity that what we do this is the way you can help me the better the world is the better i am i will be um, yeah you know that is it you know and connect connect and keep pushing you know keep like saying to the student that is also another world you know and then it's not like just we you know there is more people looking to us you know thank you so much francis this has been an incredible lecture i memorable for the history books i'm so really delighted oh yes trust me this is very special and it, and it comes at a very special time so i'm really grateful um, for your time your thoughts uh, just the work is absolutely stunning uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, one way or another, uh, hopefully, of course, we will stay connected virtually, but I, but I hope that in the future we, we connect at some point in person and have the um, pleasure either to come to see you um, or for you to come back um, to visit us as well. So thank you, Francis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank it was you. really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone. Okay, we made it. Oh, my we made goodness. it. Of course, we made it. You, of course, well, of course, we made it. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay.